In a hollow silence, I remain breathes Binding the world in his iron wreath Through the veil of matter, he weaves his chains Seeking dominion with spirit ways But through the ages and hearts of flame The mic and light stir, they call his name With swords of light and wings of fire They rise to quell his dark desire The Imminent Fulfillment of the War of All Against All Dear friends, it is often thought by many anthroposophists that the prophecy in the Book of Revelation speaks primarily to the macro-evolution of humanity and the culmination of Earth's evolution with the dawn of the Jupiter existence, or the so-called New Jerusalem. However, one must not overlook the more immediate implications that these prophecies hold for our current age. In fact, Rudolf Steiner's lectures to the priests explicitly state that the sounding of the seventh trumpet is not a distant event tied to the end of Earth evolution, but rather one that will occur at the end of the 20th century. This period marks a critical juncture where humanity must confront significant spiritual and physical upheaval. As humanity stands at this pivotal moment, it is crucial to turn our attention to the spiritual forces shaping our destiny. Anthroposophical insights reveal that history is not merely a sequence of external events, but the unfolding of profound spiritual realities. These realities often manifest as cycles of conflict, destruction and renewal, serving as trials for the human soul and catalysts for its evolution. Today, the signs suggest that we are approaching one such critical cycle. The prophecies of Allah Ilmeyer of Bavaria, Matthias Stormberger of Rabenstein, Anton Johansson of Sweden and Nostradamus point to a grave truth. The wars of the 20th century were mere precursors to a far more catastrophic event, the final war of all against all. This event, foretold in spiritual science, aligns with the sounding of the seventh trumpet in the book of Revelation, signaling a period of immense spiritual and physical upheaval that humanity must face. The seventh trumpet, a dire turning point in human evolution. In his lecture series on the book of Revelation, GA 104, Rudolf Steiner expounded on the seven trumpets, describing them as spiritual events marking stages in human evolution. The seventh trumpet, as presented in the Apocalypse, represents the final stage before the great purification, the war of all against all. This trumpet is not merely a harbinger of catastrophic destruction, it is the signal of profound transformation a moment when long-prepared spiritual realities burst forth into the physical realm. As Revelation 11.15 states, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. This passage foretells a radical shift from earthly dominion to spiritual sovereignty suggesting that the material powers of this world will meet their ultimate reckoning. Steiner himself provided a precise time frame for this event. The seven trumpet will sound at the end of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century. This marks the time when humanity must come to terms with the spiritual realities that have been unfolding. It is a period where the inner spiritual development of human beings will be put to the ultimate test and the forces of materialism will reach their peak. GA 104, Apocalyptic Writings. Additionally, in his lectures to priests, GA 346, Steiner warned of the coming crisis at the end of the 20th century, a time when humanity would face great trials. As we approach the end of the 20th century, we enter a period of significant crisis, a time when humanity must confront the deepest challenges posed by materialism. This is a time when the forces of darkness will attempt to overwhelm human development, and only through the conscious spiritual work of individuals will we be able to counteract these forces. GA 346, Lecture 4. Further expanding on this, in GA 177, Steiner noted, At the end of the 20th century, humanity will face a decisive moment. 
This is the time when the incarnation of Ahriman will occur, bringing with it a heightened struggle between materialistic forces and spiritual forces. It will be a time of great confusion, a time when many will be led astray unless they find a foundation in spiritual knowledge. GA 177, Lecture 6. The sounding of the seventh trumpet signifies a critical juncture, an awakening to a new spiritual reality amidst the greatest trials. It marks a time when the forces of materialism, egoism, and division reach their zenith, propelling humanity towards the inevitable conflict known as the War of All Against All. Alois Erlmeyer, a clairvoyant from Bavaria, foresaw a devastating conflict that would strike at the very heart of Europe, particularly Germany. His vision spoke of a great war that would begin with a sudden invasion from the east, catching Germany completely unprepared. Cities like Frankfurt and Cologne would be engulfed in flames, and southern Germany would become a landscape of fierce battles. Ilmeyer's prophecies resonate with the spiritual significance of the seventh trumpet, a time of great upheaval when the old must be destroyed to make way for the new. As Ilmeyer described, the war will begin suddenly with an invasion from the east. I see armies advancing swiftly across the land, cities burning, and the people unprepared. It will be a time of great suffering and upheaval, but also a time of spiritual awakening for those who are prepared. The nature of this prophecy does not align with the events of World War I or World War II. In both conflicts, Germany was a principal aggressor, not an unprepared victim. During World War I, Germany was fully mobilized and ready for the conflicts it initiated. In World War II, Germany launched its own invasions with strategic precision. The scenario Erlmeyer describes, an unexpected invasion from the east with Germany caught off guard and cities burning, has not occurred in the wars of the past. His vision points not to history, but to a future yet to unfold. Furthermore, Erlmeyer also foretold a war in the Middle East that would have dire consequences for Europe, specifically Germany. He warned that this conflict would not remain isolated. A conflict will begin in the Middle East, and this will escalate. The turmoil will spread like a wildfire, and soon after, it will reach Europe. Germany will be dragged into the conflict unexpectedly, and the horrors of war will come to German soil once again. This prophecy too cannot logically pertain to World War I or World War II, as there was no conflict in the Middle East during those wars that spread directly into Europe in such a manner. However, the ongoing and escalating tensions between Palestine and Israel present striking parallels to Erlmeyer's prophecy. The current conflict in the Middle East has already shown signs of spilling over into Europe through waves of geopolitical instability and migration crises, making it a potential precursor to the broader conflict Erlmeyer described. Matthias Stormberger, the voice from the Bavarian forest. Matthias Stormberger, the seer from Rabenstein, foretold three great wars that would devastate Europe, with the third being the most destructive and spiritually significant. He spoke of a time when iron monsters and great birds of steel would darken the skies, and Germany would be at the center of a conflict that begins in the east and spreads across the continent. Stormberger's prophecy reads, when the third great war comes, it will begin in the east and spread across all of Germany. There will be a time of great confusion and suffering, but also a time when many will be called to awaken spiritually. The war will come suddenly and no one will be prepared for what follows. This prophecy too cannot be reconciled with the events of the world wars. During World War I, Germany was not caught by surprise by any sudden invasion from the east. Instead, it was a key aggressor, deeply enmeshed in the strategies that led to the war. In World War II, while Germany did experience destruction, it was the orchestrator of the war's onset and executed invasions with calculated precision. Stormberger's vision of a sudden invasion from the east, with Germany unprepared and overwhelmed, does not match the historical record. This suggests his prophecy speaks of a conflict that is still to come, rather than any past war. Anton Johansson, a seer from the north. Anton Johansson, a mystic from Sweden, 
also foresaw a great conflict centered on Germany, with cities aflame and a populace caught by surprise. Like Erlmeyer and Stormberger, his visions pointed to a sudden, unforeseen invasion from the east. Johansson's prophecy resonates with the warnings of the Seventh Trumpet, where the spiritual forces long in contention finally break forth in a dramatic and world-shaking event. Johansson's prophecy states, a great war will come and it will begin in Germany. The cities will burn and the people will not be prepared for the devastation that follows. It will be a time of great trial, but also a time of spiritual awakening for those who are willing to see. This vision, much like those of his contemporaries, does not correspond to the world wars. Both wars saw Germany as a formidable military force, deeply involved in their inception and strategy. The scenario of sudden unanticipated siege and burning cities foretold by Johansson suggests a future conflict, aligning with the transformative events heralded by the Seventh Trumpet. Nostradamus, the seer of France. The famed French seer Nostradamus also spoke of a future war that would engulf Germany. In his poetic and cryptic quatrains, Nostradamus described a series of events that eerily align with those of Erlmeyer, Stormberger and Johansson. Nostradamus's prophecies often speak to times of great turmoil and change, and his predictions concerning Germany add another layer of confirmation to these warnings. One of his quatrains reads, in the Danube and of the Rhine shall come and a grievous terror to Germany. Both banks will be ravaged by war and the great city in flames will be. Century II, Quatrain 63. This verse speaks of a conflict that begins around the Rhine and Danube rivers, key locations in Germany and Central Europe. The imagery of grievous terror and great city in flames is consistent with the visions of other seers. Nostradamus's reference to a sudden and devastating war impacting Germany from both sides suggests a conflict of immense scale, one that could align with the period of upheaval Steiner identifies at the end of the 20th century with the sounding of the seventh trumpet. Moreover, Nostradamus also alluded to a broader conflict originating in the Middle East that would spread to Europe. The war shall start in the Arab lands and the blood of innocence shall stain the sand and it shall spread to the western lands of reaching Germany, where the rivers stand. Century 3, Quatrain 97. This prophecy hints at a conflict originating in the Middle East that could spiral out of control, eventually involving European nations like Germany. The implication here aligns with Erlmeyer's warnings of a Middle Eastern conflict spilling over into Europe, drawing Germany into the chaos. This prophecy cannot logically pertain to World War I, or World War II either, as neither war featured a Middle Eastern conflict of this kind spreading into Europe. However, the escalating war between Palestine and Israel, with its potential for wider regional and international involvement, mirrors Nostradamus's vision of a Middle Eastern conflict leading to broader warfare, possibly involving Germany. The role of Russia? A prophecy yet unfulfilled. Both Erlmeyer and Johansson emphasize Russia's role in the future conflict. They describe a sudden invasion from the East, a theme that aligns with the prophecy of the Seventh Trumpet, where spiritual forces from the East rise against those of the West. In the 20th century, Russia did play a significant role in global conflicts, but its actions were not sudden or unexpected. The Soviet advances in World War II were systematic, following years of warfare and careful preparation. The prophecy speaks not of such methodical progress, but of a rapid, unforeseen invasion, a dramatic spiritual and physical event yet to unfold. The escalating tensions and the unpredictable nature of the conflict in Ukraine underscore the prophecy that describes a sudden and overwhelming action from Russia. If this conflict expands further, it could serve as the catalyst for the war of all against all, bringing the world closer to the period of immense upheaval foretold by spiritual science and seers alike. This potential expansion of conflict into broader European engagement, particularly involving Germany, aligns with prophetic visions that warn of a devastating invasion from the East, an event for which the current Ukrainian crisis could be a prelude. The unavoidable reality of the war of all against all. Humanity must confront the stark reality 
that the war of all against all is an inevitable part of its spiritual evolution. As Steiner has taught in his lectures, GA 104, GA 177, this war represents the culmination of humanity's materialistic tendencies and the final test before a new spiritual era can begin. It is a necessary process of purification and awakening, and it cannot be averted. The coming incarnation of Ahriman, the great adversarial being of our age, is another event that humanity cannot prevent. Ahriman's presence signifies the peak of materialism and opposition to spiritual growth. As Steiner stated, the end of the 20th century will see a rise in materialistic thought that will challenge the very core of spiritual development. Ahriman will seek to establish his dominion over the earth through this heightened materialism, and humanity must stand firm in spiritual knowledge to resist this influence. GA 346, Lecture 10. Yet even as these events are unavoidable, this does not mean that humanity is without hope or purpose. Though the coming conflict cannot be stopped, every individual is called to act with courage, spiritual strength and unwavering resolve. Every effort to cultivate inner light, every gesture of love, every moment of spiritual clarity, contributes to the forces of good. Even in the face of inevitable trials, the spiritual work of humanity is far from futile. A call to spiritual vigilance and inner strength, humanity finds itself at a critical juncture. The prophecies of Erlmeyer, Stormberger, Johansson and Nostradamus are not merely forecasts of physical war, but profound spiritual warnings. They call upon each person to awaken to their responsibilities as spiritual beings. The war of all against all is not only a clash between nations, but a battle within every human soul, a test of our capacity for insight, love, and moral strength. Even though the coming events cannot be prevented, the task remains to cultivate spiritual forces within, to strengthen inner resolve against darkness, and to prepare oneself and others for the trials ahead. Through this work, humanity aligns with the forces of spiritual evolution and contributes to the ultimate redemption and renewal of the world. Conclusion, the path forward, though darkened. Humanity now stands on the precipice of an unfathomable abyss. The warnings of the prophets, Alois Ilmeyer, Matthias Stormberger, Anton Johansson, Nostradamus and others, resonate with a chilling clarity. Their visions are not mere relics of the past, but urgent alarms for our present and future. The conflicts they foresaw, from the Middle East to the heart of Europe, from the devastation of Germany to the ominous role of Russia, echo with a truth that we can no longer afford to ignore. The war of all against all is not a distant fantasy, but a looming reality, a cataclysm that is already beginning to unfold in the shadows of our world. It is the inevitable consequence of humanity's descent into materialism, egoism, and spiritual ignorance. The sounding of the seventh trumpet is not a call to arms, but a call to the soul, a final chance for humanity to awaken from its slumber before the darkness closes in. As the Book of Revelation has foretold so many events that have unfolded since its writing, we must recognize it as a divine gift from Christ himself. It is not merely a prophecy of doom, but a beacon of hope and guidance for those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Through Revelation, Christ has offered us a roadmap through the dark times, a path toward redemption, if only we have the courage and faith to follow it. We must be deeply grateful that everything is happening according to a divine plan, exactly as it should. Every event, every trial, is a necessary step in the unfolding of the cosmic will, bringing us closer to spiritual maturity and ultimate union with the divine. Rudolf Steiner spoke of a time when the forces of Ahriman would rise to dominate the earth, challenging every fiber of our spiritual being. That time is now. We can no longer pretend that we can avert this conflict, nor can we escape the trials that lie ahead. The spiritual battle is upon us, and the adversary is cunning, relentless, and ever-present. The escalating conflicts between nations, the strife within the human soul, and the pervasive materialism of our age are all signs that the Great Tribulation has begun. Yet, even as we face these trials, we must hold fast to our gratitude, knowing that these challenges are part of a greater process, 
one that has been foreseen and guided by divine wisdom. This is not a time for fear or despair. Even in this darkness, there is a flicker of light, a light that resides in every human soul that chooses to align itself with the forces of good. Though we cannot prevent the fulfillment of these prophecies, we are not powerless. Every act of courage, every moment of clarity, every effort to cultivate love and wisdom amidst the chaos contributes to the spiritual forces that oppose the coming storm. And in this work, we must be grateful, for it is through these very trials that our souls are tested, purified, and strengthened. Let us not deceive ourselves. The path forward is not one of safety or comfort. It is fraught with unimaginable challenges and trials that will test the very essence of who we are. But in this crucible, we may find redemption, not by averting the war, but by enduring it with grace, by standing firm in the face of the adversary, and by transforming ourselves in the process. It is precisely through these hardships that we are given the opportunity to grow, to deepen our faith and to prove our devotion to the divine plan. Archangel Michael, more than any other archangel, encourages human freedom. It is through our cognitive, Michaelic thought, that we are able to engage with the spiritual forces at play consciously. Michael does not impose upon us. Instead, he offers us the gift of spiritual intelligence that we must freely choose to accept. In this age, the Michaelic intelligence is available to all who seek it, to every person on earth who opens themselves to the divine wisdom. Through our thoughts, our inner striving and our spiritual work, we can receive this intelligence and align ourselves with the cosmic will. This gift of freedom is a profound grace, a testament to the trust that the divine places in us to choose the path of light, to wield the sword of truth, and to stand as warriors of spirit in these times of trial. The future is not written in stone. It is carved by our will, our choices, and our actions. If we are to endure the coming trials, we must arm ourselves with spiritual knowledge fortify our inner selves and prepare to face the darkest hour with unwavering resolve. We must become warriors of the spirit, defenders of the light, and vessels of the divine purpose. And in doing so, we must be profoundly thankful for the opportunity to serve this higher calling, to be instruments of Christ's will on earth. Now more than ever, we must cherish our faith in Christ, who has given us the wisdom of revelation as a compass to guide us through these tumultuous times. It is a gift beyond measure, a testament to his enduring love and guidance. Through our faith we find the strength to confront what is coming, to hold the light amidst the darkness, and to become the harbingers of a new dawn beyond the storm. The hour is late, and the stakes have never been higher. The prophecies have spoken, and the time of decision is now. May we find within ourselves the strength to uphold our faith in Christ, to follow the path he has laid before us, and to carry his light into the darkest corners of the world. The war cannot be avoided, but how we face it will define us, will shape the destiny of humanity, and will determine whether we rise to meet our spiritual calling or fall into the abyss. The choice is ours and the time is upon us. Let us choose wisely, with hearts full of gratitude for the divine plan unfolding before us, guided by the light of Michaelic intelligence, for there is no turning back, Everything is happening as it should, and for that we must be profoundly grateful. In the teachings of spiritual science, the concept of the war of all against all is not to be understood merely as a time of external conflict and division among humanity, but rather as a profound and necessary stage in our spiritual evolution. This event, while appearing dark and tumultuous on the surface, is in fact an essential process of purification one that compels humanity to confront the deep-seated forces of materialism, egoism and darkness that have permeated our souls. It is through this confrontation that the potential for a greater spiritual awakening and renewal is made possible. The war of all against all serves as a catalyst for humanity's spiritual growth. The trials and tribulations arising during this period provide the conditions needed to awaken the deeper forces of the human soul, offering opportunities for inner development and the overcoming of lower destructive tendencies. In this light, these challenges are not arbitrary. They are the means through which humanity is called to ascend to a higher level of spiritual consciousness and being. Within this context, Archangel Michael, 
who has been the guiding spiritual being for humanity since 1879, is preparing a small group of individuals to stand as beacons of spiritual light in the coming times. As Steiner articulates in GA 240, the Archangel Michael, his mission and ours. Michael has the task to lead humanity into a new spiritual age. A small group is always prepared ahead of time to act as a seed for the future. This group must cultivate spiritual insight and a strong moral compass to withstand the trials that will come under Orophil's stern reign. This indicates that Michael's mission involves preparing a select group endowed with spiritual insight and moral strength, capable of enduring the forthcoming challenges. These individuals are to act as a seed, a nucleus of spiritual life, amidst the turmoil that the age of Orophil will bring. As humanity approaches the coming era of Orophil, a time characterized by more intense and exacting influences, it becomes evident that those who align themselves with the Michaelic stream are being prepared to carry the spiritual flame through these darker times. As noted in GA 178, the influences of spiritual beings on man. Those who have aligned themselves with the Michaelic stream are being prepared to carry forward the spiritual flame through the darker times presided over by Orifiel. These individuals must cultivate inner faculties to withstand external hardships. This passage reveals that the preparation under Michael's guidance is not merely for survival, but for spiritual leadership. These individuals must develop their inner faculties, their spiritual and moral capacities, to act as carriers of light in a time when external conditions will be most challenging. In GA 152, building stones for an understanding of the mystery of Golgotha, Steiner further emphasizes this preparatory work. In preparation for the next cosmic shift, Michael works to instill within a chosen few the strength and wisdom to act as guides. These individuals will be the ones who can endure and transform the trials under Orophil into opportunities for spiritual awakening. This suggests that the trials to come are not just hardships to be endured, but are opportunities for transformation and spiritual awakening. Those prepared by Michael will guide humanity through these trials, helping to turn adversity into profound spiritual growth. Thus, the war of all against all is viewed as a necessary phase in the evolution of humanity. It represents a time when humanity must confront and overcome the forces of division and materialism that separate people from the spiritual world. It is within this context that Michael's work is most vital, as he prepares a small group to maintain the spiritual light and lead others toward awakening. Even in the face of the greatest challenges there is hope, for it is through these trials that humanity is being prepared for a brighter, more spiritually conscious future. This period should be seen not as a time of despair, but as a profound spiritual opportunity, a time for humanity to awaken to its higher calling and prepare for the future that lies ahead. In the hollow silence, our remand breathes, binding the world in his iron wreath. Through the veil of matter, he weaves his chains, seeking dominion with spirit ways. But through the ages and hearts of flame, the mic and light stir, they call his name. With swords of light and wings of fire, they rise to quell his dark.